Hey everybody, this is Natalie and welcome back to my channel. Oh look, how cute. Today I thought we would do a whip and chat. Kind of talk about what's been going on with me the last couple of months. And I also thought we could talk a little bit about breast cancer awareness. It is the month of October and us ladies that are 40 and older have to take care of our tatas. So I found a really good article I thought I could reach you guys and we can uh, have a small discussion about it. So the diamond painting I'm working on right now is the Snow Queen by Diamond Art Club. I really had a lot of fun working on her. The colors are so vibrant and beautiful. Um, I am working on this side of her right now. I'm right here on the corner of her. So this part is all done and I'm right here on the corner and then I'll flip her over and start on that side. So I don't get a whole lot of time to diamond paint and when I do have time, I'm exhausted. So it's been taking me quite a while to get her done, but we're here now and we're gonna work on it. All right, so just to kind of give you a little heads up, I know I've been MIA the last couple months. Couple reasons is it was summer, the kids were home, and it was hard to find time to sit down and video. And work's been really busy. I work for an airline and the summers are really busy. So it's just been really hard to just sit down and do anything lately. But now the weather's cooler, the kids are back in school, my job's mellowed out, I found a schedule that works really well for me. So I'm finding that I'm missing you guys and I want to get back into the swing of things. So um, I do not like having a glare on my diamond painting and I have a glare right now, but if I move the light, it's dark and you guys won't be able to see what I'm doing. So if you see me go like this, it's because I'm trying to block the brightness of it. So it looks like I'm actually done with this color. So we will move on to the next one. Um, also, another reason why I've kind of been MIA is, I don't know, I've been watching a lot of diamond painting videos and I guess you could say I'm a bit jealous. Um, and it's mostly because, you know, things that people buy for their diamond paintings and other crafts and I just can't afford to do a lot of that stuff. Um, I am a single mom of three kids. I do have a boyfriend. We've been going um, out for over eight years and I mean, we're pretty much domestic partners, but he only works part-time and I'm the full-time breadwinner in our house. And so I work a lot to make ends meet, but he keeps the house together and does all the cooking and cleaning. I don't have to do any of that. He takes care of all of it. He does all the bills, everything. So because he does the bills, he's really good with money. Me spending money has really come to a halt because he can see what I'm spending now. I know, terrible. I, I did really good at hiding it, but I'm glad I have him to keep me grounded because, um, I love to spend money and I love diamond painting and everything I find, I'm like, oh my God, look how cute and I have to have it. So I'm trying to step back a bit and try to buy diamond paintings that I know that I will either hang up on my wall or give away as a gift. I'm trying to back away from buying diamond paintings that are cute. So I did, uh, I do want to get the whole collection of the princesses from Diamond Art Club. Um, I know a lot of them are on clearance, so I'm nervous, but I figured each payday I can buy one, and I do want to get the whole set of that, so that's kind of what I've been concentrating on. Um, but yeah, and then of course, now they're coming out with the Hannah Lynn designs, I gotta have those. So yeah, it's been a little bit difficult, and it's just hard because now a lot of the dining diamond painters that I watched on YouTube are doing coloring and they're buying all these markers and pencils and pastels and chalks and blending tools and all this kind of stuff and nice diamond painting pens and containers and all kinds of fancy stuff. Um, cover minders and just crazy stuff that I want to have. I just can't afford it. So I kind of stepped back because I figured if I couldn't see what was out there, then I wasn't tempted to buy the stuff. So I know it's kind of silly, kind of childish, but it was just really hard for me to watch because somebody would open up a diamond painting and I just fell in love with it and wanted it. And then now it's just sitting in a box. 
you know, in my room. But anyway, it keeps me happy, so that's good. Um, let's see what else has been going on. Um, pretty much that's it. Um, been taking care of my dad. He's um, 69 years old. He's a widow. He does still live by himself, and he has a dog, Booker, that I swear he loves more than me. But he won't admit it, but we all kind of know it. Um, I am my dad's only living child. He, I did have an older brother who passed away. Um, he died of AIDS. And so I'm all that my dad has because his wife has passed away. And so um, I've been having, you know, to take care of him and make sure that he's got everything that he needs and that he's got company because he gets lonely. He is on the board of directors with his HOA. So that's been keeping him busy and he complains about it. But I know if he didn't have that, he would be so depressed and lonely. So, yeah, it's just been kind of a little struggle. Um, I live about 30 minutes away from him. It's not a long way, but it's kind of a long way. And with me working full time, and it's been hard to get out there and spend time with him. Um, there's been a lot of death lately. A lot of people are passing away. Um, I had a girlfriend that lives in Alaska. And I met her, we played bingo together online on Facebook, Bingo Blitz. And I've known her for years and she's come to Utah and I've met her and um, she's only two years older than me. I'm 45, so she was 47, getting ready to turn 48. And she died in her sleep. She was healthy, she went to the gym every day. Um, and all of a sudden I read on Facebook that she died in her sleep and I'm like, what? How? She's the most healthiest person I know. So it just kind of really opened up my eyes. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm 45 and I better get my butt in gear and start taking care of myself because I'm not ready to pass away. I know it's inevitable and I know I can't stop it from happening, but I'm sure gonna try. So that's kind of got me scared. Uh, my ex-father-in-law passed away um, and it was a sad passing because he, was getting out of bed, he slipped and fell, and bumped his head, died, just like that. And he, otherwise he was, you know, pretty healthy. Um, so it's just crazy stuff like that is happening. And then a girl that I work with, her niece, who's only six years old, just died of leukemia. And we've watched her story. And uh, it's just been really crazy and depressing. And I just, you know, just decided just to step back and, and enjoy my life and not be in such a rush and not have to worry about what the next what the next door neighbors are doing or what my YouTube community is doing and just focus on myself and do what I can do and what I can afford and that kind of stuff. So I don't know. I did just kind of take a step back and um, I just barely started getting back into it and um, got contacted by the co a company to do a review for them. And so, of course, I did a video for them, and then it kind of got me back back into it. I'm like, oh, I kind of missed this. So here I am, going to do a whip and chat and uh, kind of let you know what's been going on and that kind of thing. So, let's see. I am working on number two, which is 312. <coughs> Pardon me. And it looks like I've got that done. And of course, I'll find one after I put it away. It's just the way it goes. Um, so I have had a total of two mammograms since um, I turned 40. And I'm 45. I thought you had to be 50, over 50, but apparently it's 40 now. They've changed it. The first year I went, everything came back fine. The second time I went, they found something abnormal. And of course, then I had to go into another place where they really did extensive screening of my breast tissue. And of course it came back negative, $660 later for them to squish my boobs. It wasn't the most fantastic experience. Can I just tell you that? So I do have to go back again next month and I'm not really looking forward to it because it hurts. And if it comes back, positive again, I'm going to freak out because I don't have $660 lying around to, for them to do another exam. So 
been kind of putting it off, but I know I shouldn't. Um, you know, a couple of our diamond painter, our diamond painting community has had breast cancer at a young age. Ella from Kicking Cancer's Butt and Danielle from Stitcherista. They both are were in their 40s when they got breast cancer. So I need to jump up on it and take care of it. So um, it's just, you know, not fun. All right, so let's see. I got this really cool article. I thought we could talk about it. All right, it's called Mammogram Q&A, Annual Screening Critical for Detecting Breast Cancer. Whether it's time for your first mammogram or your 10th, many misconceptions exist about mammograms. Here, I'm gonna change this into light because I'm blind. All right, um, let's see, what was I working on? Um, C's. Um, you might be afraid to have one or you might think you're in good health and don't need one. But here are the facts. Regular mammograms find or detect early breast cancer when it's easiest to treat. And treatment in the early stages significantly reduces your risk of dying from the disease. Here are some of the most common questions and answers about mammograms. Should all women start mammograms at the same age? According to Intermountain Healthcare Guidelines, women at average risk for breast, breast cancer should begin annual screening mammogram at the age of 40. I really, all these years, thought it was 50. Screening should continue each year as long as the woman is healthy. The American Cancer Society advises screening begin at age 40 because 20% of breast cancers occur in women younger than 50. It's important that women not wait until they are 50 to start screening. So for those of you that thought you had to be 50, surprise, surprise, I'm here to tell you that's not the case. All right, is there any reason women should receive a screening before 40? Sometimes, use the following guidelines to determine if you need a mammogram before age 40. Women at high risk for breast cancer are those with the, excuse me, women at high risk for breast cancer are those with the breast cancer gene or for, or, or, oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> women at high risk for breast cancer are those with the breast cancer gene or for, or first degree relatives like a mother or a sister with breast and or ovarian cancer. They should consult with the genetics counselor for a potential MRI screening. Now, my maternal grandmother did have breast cancer, but they didn't find it in her until she was 70. So, um, so when we found that out, that's when I started going and found out, oh, yeah, you were supposed to go when you were 40. I'm like, oh, huh, great. So, but at least I'm going. So I'm proud of that. Women with a first degree relative with premenopausal breast cancer should begin screening 10 years before the age of diagnosis of their relative. For example, if your mother was diagnosed at age 45, you should begin screening at age 35. Um, or whichever, you know, or if there's not, obviously 40 would be the time to do that. Um, Women with a lump or any suspicious symptoms should undergo diagnostic evaluation, which may include a mammogram, ultrasound, or both. Do mammograms prevent breast cancer? No, a mammogram cannot prevent breast cancer, but it may detect an early stage cancer that cannot be felt on physical examinations. For those of you that have had a mammogram, I'm sorry but you understand that they really are brutal to your tatas to make sure they don't find any abnormal cells or lumps or anything like that. Yeah, um, I my work will do this mammogram mobile every October and that's where I've been going. And the second time I went is when they found a problem and then I went to the hospital to have them redo it 
Oh my gosh, the hospital was way rough. Oh my gosh, than this mamm mammogram was. So I thought this year when I go, I'm just gonna go right to the hospital and have it done. Because their machine, it was just very nice. And they really got into it and checked everything out. And so I thought, you know, to avoid paying the $600 fee to go back, I'm just gonna have them do it the first time. So yeah, not very fun. All right, so let me grab another color really quick here. Um, where does this go? All right, we are going to do the biohazard sign, which is 803. All right. Okay. Next. Does a call back from an abnormal screening exam mean I have cancer? Well, I had that experience, so this is true to its word. No, it simply means the radiologist wants to do more tests, like an ultrasound to take a closer look at any areas of concern. It's not uncommon for a doctor to ask for additional testing due to an abnormal mammogram, even if a patient has had mammograms annually for years. She may get called back for more testing, but it's not a reason to worry. According to experts in breast imaging, fewer than one in 20 women recalled from an abnormal screening mammogram will have cancer. I wish I would have read this article last year when I had an abnormal screening because I was freaking out. So that's good to know that one, one in 20. So, but like I said, I'm just gonna go straight to the hospital and just have them do it because it was definitely a better screening in my opinion. All right, do all abnormal findings from a mammogram indicate breast cancer? No, the breast tissue is a lot like a fingerprint and images will vary. If this is your first time receiving a mammogram, the radiologist will need a starting image to see what's normal breast tissue, what's normal breast tissue for you. This is another reason why it's common to be called back after your first mammogram. Lumps or tumors found in the breast are often benign. In the US, seven out of 10 biopsies results are not cancer, but a biopsy is the only way to find out. I did not have to have a biopsy, so that was good. But I'm sure if they would have found something in the second screening, I'm sure the biopsy would have been next, so. Um, I'm not very good at doing self breast exams. Um, I really need to be better about it. Um, so for those of you that do it, great job. For those of you that don't, maybe it's time we do. All right, do I need a referral from my doctor to get a screening mammogram? I think I need more wax, this is coming apart. No, even if your doctor doesn't mention it to you, you can schedule an appointment. Most select health insurance plans, as well as many other health insurers, cover 100% of cost for breast cancer screening under preventative care. So if that's the case, then how come I had to pay $660 to have a second test done? Yeah, it was crazy. And they're like, oh, if you pay it all in full right now, we'll give you a 10% discount. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I'm still bitter. Can you tell them that was a year ago? Still bitter about that. Um, a physician's order may be needed for additional testing with a diagnostic mammogram or an ultrasound. Check with your health insurance provider to learn more about what is covered in your plan. I know there's a lot of places that will give you a free mammogram. So if you don't have insurance, check it out, call your health department, find out where those are so that you're not missing out on opportunity to detect breast cancer. Mammograms save lives. A study by the Cleveland Clinic found of 1,222 breast cancer patients, 13% had a normal mammogram with in a year of their diagnosis, it's critical to be vigilant against the disease and mammograms are one of the most useful preventative tools. So there you have it. How to, what the purpose of a mammogram is, how to get one done, what it finds, what it means, all that good stuff.
So please, ladies, take care of your tatas. If I have any men watching, please make sure your sisters and mothers, aunts, nieces, cousins are all taking care of themselves. We need to fight the cancer because it's it's taken over. And these small kids that are dying from it, it just kills me. Six years old, my friend died of, of, of leukemia and it's just, oh my gosh, heartbreaking. Absolutely heartbreaking. And I didn't even go to the funeral because I could not see a little coffin. I just couldn't do it. I just could not bring myself to do it, so. Um, cancer's a big deal, guys, so make sure you're getting your testing. Let's see how much time we have. All right, so we're about 20 minutes into the video. I'll go ahead and end it now. Um, I appreciate you all sticking it out with me and listening to my mammogram Q&A. I hope everybody um, is taking good care of themselves, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.